Hello everyone, it's Francis with your book of memories. I've got a nice big book right here and a brand new tutorial for you. Welcome in friends. I am so super excited and if you're new, it's just fantastic to be here with you. I've got a nice big album share and I am so excited to jump into the tutorial with you. I created a really nice big brand new design and this one I'm calling the Mighty Mini Album. <laughs> it holds five by seven pictures so it's specifically dedicated to that size of photo. And I used the Today Paper Pack Watercolor and Design by Francis Long, <laughs> which is me. And we've got amazing little cut apart pages there and a wonderful fussy cutting page right here with all these fun little elements totally family oriented and it was just a blast to make. I have stuff left over, tons of paper sheets and even little bits and pieces. <laughs> so right here I've got Dollar Tree ribbon just holding this book together. And then I stuck on like a little belly band right there and I mounted right here on the front one of the four by six cutouts. <laughs> I just popped it up with some dimensional foam tape. I'll leave a link to the paper collection down below if you wanted to pick one up. So right here on the front inside cover, I fussy cut one of these out of the 12 by 12 pages. And then we have like this cute little tie closure, but first let's look inside this cute pocket. I've got some five by seven inserts in here, the girls, and I just fussy cut those little images out, two of a kind. And I add my own little tab on there and I show you how to do that with your circle punch. We got happy and a nice four by six cut out right here. <laughs> happy us, and you can even top your tags with a nice little hole punch and some twine if you wanted to. And these just tuck right back inside. How fun is that? Okay, so right here I have a little twine closure with a couple brad twist ties. And then this opens up right here and you got photo space on the top, the boys. And then right here, you also have another spot for a nice uncropped five by seven right down here. We got a cute little succulent pot on top of a tree stump right there and a nice watercolor illustration. This nice flap opens up and we got a cute two by two picture space right there. And then right here is a nice waterfall with another little picture spot. Now, of course I left these open where you can tuck your pictures underneath and this flips up and I have a cute little journaling spot that I just doodled up. And you got a nice beautiful five by seven photo spots right here. Tons of room for pictures. Moments I just doodled out again. And then you have the back and you can add really anything you want in here. You can even have loose photo mats totally held in by these flaps. <laughs> and this just ties back to keep it closed. We also have a large words page that comes with the Today Paper Pack and some awesome 4x4s, so I've got an image cut out from that. And then out of the words page, I put besties. Now this is a nice on-page pocket. Again, another 5x7 photo spot. And here's a little 4x6 picture spot too, as well as oh the fun we have. <laughs> Cute little cut apart page right there. And then I just added a paper clip and another little picture spot easily by just stamping a picture right on the back of that. And everything just goes right back inside. You'd be surprised how much this little pocket can hold. You give the page a turn and right on the back, you got this little faux belly band situation here <laughs> and a little cluster there. And I did a little paper clip, good times, hugs, and another spot for a four by four picture. You could probably hold about 40 to 45 pictures in here, I believe. Look at these cute little two by two spots. So fun. Five by seven picture spot. Here's the next one. So unbelievably simple. It just came together wonderfully. We've got a nice little magnetic closure, a sideways envelope style page. And then these little tags come out of here. Here, memories are made. Again, you could top your tags. I do like to do some journal lines on the back as well. And right on the back of here, we have all these little fun elements, the best, and I just love it. We've got family from that nice big words page and right here on the back, super cute with a little banner and a succulent pot made of a tire. <laughs> For some reason, my imagination, I just wanted to paint that. It took me so long to get that just right. So we got this cute little guy. I love the two by two spots. It breaks everything up. Just the two of us with a little cacti. <laughs> put a tab on the page right here just for a little bit of extra-ness and then we got memories down here and a brick planner pot for some more cacti in there wonderful stack pockets love that simple angle love the black sprinkle page and here again we just have a cute little tag and another insert unreal absolutely love it a nice four by five photo spot right there 
and some journaling space. Love the stories along with the photos. And right back here we have a nice large insert again for a nice five by seven, along with another cut apart and a tag. Super duper fun, oh my goodness. Are you ready to make this book? I'm so beyond honored to be here with you to do this. I'm just having so much fun already. <laughs> Let's talk all the details about the tutorials so we can begin. <laughs> I am so joyed to be here with you. I'm wishing you an excellent day wherever it is you are. Welcome to the Mighty Mini Album class. It's truly my pleasure to be here with you. It's a five by seven photo specified book and it's just so much fun. Thank you from the top of my heart for choosing me as your instructor and for inviting me into your home so you and I can craft side by side. If you ever have any questions at all, you can always email me at yourbookofmemories at gmail.com. All the details and paperweight and quantity can be found in my cut list down below. And if you wanted to download the cut list and print it out, I'll leave a link to that below as well. The link will take you to my website and there you can find the resources tab and that's where you'll download it. Also there you can watch this tutorial completely ad free. And also if you wanted to see where I get my tools and materials, I have a supplies I use link down below. I do collect a tiny commission if you happen to use those links. So thank you so much. I do strongly suggest to sit back with a cup of tea or your favorite healthy snack and watch this course in its entirety before beginning. That way you'll have an idea of how the book starts to come together. In this series, I will be demonstrating in detail all the various steps and procedures used to create individual designs throughout this book. And you can of course leave out or add in anything you want. This is your creative journey to play as you wish. There will be notes and measurements that appear across the screen as we craft along. And because this is an edited film, naturally I will be moving much quicker than you, so frequent pausing is totally normal. It's important to pay close attention to the way tools are used and to the way folds are achieved because a great deal of our magic comes from how we use our hands. Remember to take your time and work at your own pace. Speed comes with practice. Here's a super cute book we will be making together. I really believe this will be a super fun learning experience for you and I always suggest just to use this one as a guide and put your own ideas to yours. We all see art through different eyes and your book should reflect your heart and your imagination. <laughs> Become familiar with each of these tools and methods and soon you too will have a gorgeous book that you made by hand with not another one in the world like it. Are you ready to begin our journey to build your book of memories? Great. <laughs> Let's talk tools and materials so we can begin. The supplies I'll be using to create this mighty mini album will definitely be my Martha Stewart scoreboard and the Fiskars paper trimmer. Super lightweight, portable, and easy to store. I keep a nice sharp blade right here to cut my paper, and then I keep one off to the side marked down with pen so I can tell the two apart. This one is for my chipboard. <laughs> I will also have a ruler on hand. That's just from the Dollar Tree, as well as my best friend, the Martha Stewart bone folder, <laughs> a pencil, a scoring tool. Love this because the 16th of an inch ballpoint fits perfectly into the grooves for a nice accurate score mark. I like to keep an eraser on hand and also a journaling pen, which is totally optional because I like to doodle. <laughs> I also have a pair of wonderful scissors, Tim Holtz. I stay out of my own way with these. I use name brand score tape. I'll be using one quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch and also the Scotch ATG gun. Wonderful. Maybe we just need about one and a half rolls or so. <laughs> so I've got a little refill here on the side. And for my liquid base, I love Art Glitter Glue. It dries clear, it's super strong, and it dries quickly. So it's just perfect. It's got a nice precision tip. And I also like to stamp on my picture mat. So I've got a little ink pad here as well as an acrylic block with a camera stamp on it. And I've got right here an EK Tools one inch circle punch. I'm gonna use this for my twist tie closure. I also have just a choice of colored ribbon. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one yet, but we'll find out. <laughs> I also have one set of magnets right here, and usually I use the ones from Home Depot that have like a little hole in them, but this is about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, and it's a 16th of an inch thick. Beautiful and strong enough. This is from Amazon. <laughs> I also have a few brads that I'll be using today for that twist tie closure. I'm not sure which color I want, so I just have a couple options there. <laughs> and for that closure, I'm gonna need some twine. So I've chosen this out actually from the Dollar Tree as well. So we'll have to see if I end up using it. I'll also be using some chipboard, medium weight, 12 by 12. I absolutely love this chipboard. Two sheets right here. And then to wrap the book, I'm gonna need two sheets of 12 by 12 medium weight cardstock. That's around 80 pounds right here. And for all the base flaps and pockets, 
I've got another set, but this time eight and a half by 11 smooth textured cardstock, about 25 sheets right here. And I've got a lightweight cardstock, which is around 60 to 65 pounds. Again, eight and a half by 11 smooth texture. This one is for my picture mats. So mine stay on permanently. Some people remove theirs, but I like to keep mine on and I stamp them with the camera. <laughs> so now are you ready to check out the paper line we'll be using? Awesome. I'll be using the Today Paper Pack. <laughs> it might not be a surprise to you, but I absolutely love it and I want to play with it a bit more. <laughs> it's been so much fun and a really big journey to be here to finally be able to play with my own paper. So right here on the first page, we've got like a nice signature going on with some black sprinkles. Super fun, you could fussy cut around that. And here's even a smaller version for you right there. And I call these my solids, but we've got like a nice gradient watercolor wash right there. <laughs> it was so fun to play with all the paper and watch the effects of the watercolor. I've got a super simple polka dot page right here. And then a nice signature page here. Love the string of pearls. And the super cute little brick cactus again. We just have some black sprinkles here and string of pearls on their own. And this cardstock is 80 pounds as well, so it's really, really nice and thick, easy to play with, and the brick page. Unbelievable, I got crazy with those <laughs> colors there. And we also have a neutral page, black and white, can't forget that, and some sprinkles that are rainbow. And right here we've got some vertical lines, and you can even use them as horizontal, of course. I loved doing that. I remember putting my paint, that was one of the first ones that I painted, actually. <laughs> We've got some leaves right here and a beautiful succulent page. The orientation you could really do however, but I imagined it to be in this position. So we've got a nice picture right here that you can fussy cut around. Just so much fun. Rainbows, you can't forget them. That's my favorite. Got a banner page, a solids again with the green this time. Great and easy to match up with each other and coordinate. A beautiful succulent inside of a pot on top of a uh, tree, even though that's sad. It's the reality sometimes that we face, <laughs> at least for me anyways. I'm a huge tree lover. I don't know about you guys. This took me so many times to repaint, but I've got a cute little tire pot going on there. And a nice black page here and a total words page. Our day, wonderful moments, fur babies, just the two of us, me and you, all of us, family, besties, you name it. It's right here. And the teal page, one of my favorites. It's even the YBM color, so that's probably why I love it so much. Here's the tag page and 4x6 cut aparts along with the 4x4s. And we could doodle this up. I left that white space for you to play around with your journaling pen if you wanted to. And we could doodle on the back. Oh, the fun we have right here. So much fun. And then you saw this page of all the bits and pieces. Perfect. Are you ready to start building the cover for this super mighty book? <laughs> Let's do it. We need our paper trimmer, our dull blade, and our chipboard. So I've got my paper trimmer right here and I'm going to go ahead and swap out this nice paper blade for this dull chipboard one. <laughs> and I've got my chipboard ready to go right here. Now before we start trimming out our covers, I want to establish the stiff side. So with medium weight chipboard, oftentimes there's a wobbly side and a more stiff side. We have a total of two front and back cover pieces that measure seven and a half by nine and three quarters. I want us to locate the stiff side and then go in at seven and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend this arm right here and slide on over. And if you wanna cover the line each time you can or expose it every time, just stay consistent to it. That way you have the most accurate cut each time. I'm gonna start down here right at the bottom and I'm gonna to go towards my chipboard just to avoid any little <laughs> twists or turns. And I'm gonna go up once. And after that, we cut about almost halfway all the way through, but I'm gonna give it a flip <laughs> and line it up again at seven and a half loading up down at the bottom again. And that's beautiful. The more you take your time, the better you'll be. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate and cut nine and three quarters. Now my plant wants in on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and move her out of the way there and repeat the same thing. A nice firm hold here, making sure I'm all the way up at the plastic ridge, just so I'm as straight as possible. Up once and give it a flip. Start again down at the bottom, nine and three quarters. And that's bingo. We're gonna come back and use this scrap piece later. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up here. This piece right here, we're also gonna be using for our scraps. So now we have one cover piece totally cut out, seven and a half by nine and three quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same thing with this one.
absolutely beautiful job. Again, we're going to come back and use this guy. So I'm going to set him on top of the other one. And now we have a front and back cover totally cut out seven and a half by nine and three quarters. Now we just need one spine. So I'm going to go ahead and grab out of this pile here, one piece, two and five eighths by nine and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and find two and a half and then I'm going to go up an eighth. And there you are. I'm starting this one down here. So I'm going to cut towards this way and repeat the process. This is a great scrap piece as well. So I'm gonna set him up there with the narrow ones. And then this one, you know what? <laughs> you could totally figure out what you wanna, you can make an embellishment out of this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these scraps off to the side and we just completely cut out the spine and the front and back cover. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out this dull blade. We won't need him anymore. Then I'm gonna bring in the nice sharp paper one. Then I'm gonna make a little bit of room. Now, in order to wrap these awesome little chipboard pieces, we're gonna need to get out our two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight cardstock, which I had earlier. And we just gotta unite these pieces right here, very simply with one piece of tape on one side. So I like to use 3 eighths for this. And I'm just gonna line it up straight as I can, right in the corner. Now I'm gonna apply a little bit of tension to keep it nice and straight. And then I'm gonna find my motion here. Do a couple pre-taps, the straighter the tape, the straighter the guy. I'm just gonna peel it with my finger right there and bring in my best friend. <laughs> Here's the bone folder. Give it a nice burnish to solidify that tape on there. And when you're ready, you can remove the Teflon and unite these two pages. I like to start down right here at the bottom and cover that adhesive. And then I just allow the page to pretty much just fall. Keep it nice and flat and guide it up just like that and solidify it in. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and make a guide at the top of this guy. So I'm gonna get my scoring tool and my scoreboard and I'm gonna line this up with the 12 inch side along the top. And I'm simply just gonna score at the one. And you're probably thinking, Francis, how in the world am I gonna... <laughs> you can just lift your piece and connect your score lines and continue the way down. Even if it looks a little silly. <laughs> it's just a nice guideline for us. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the scoreboard now. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this cover wrap piece. You will notice that since we united these pieces, there is a front overlap of the paper and then there's a back. So here's the front one and the back one. When we come to stick our spine down first, we wanna make sure we never stick any of the edges of our chipboard pieces at the edge of where our overlapping paper pieces are. Cause then we'll have a boo-boo and I really want you to be happy with your book. <laughs> So let's go ahead and actually add some tape onto these guys. I love using quarter inch score tape for this. So I've got my guy here and I'm just gonna go around the perimeter and then a little bit on the inside. Super easy, simple. <laughs> this is something you can do. It is so unbelievably wonderful to be here with you. I cannot wait to see your finished books. If you haven't joined my mini album artists Facebook group yet, I would love to see it. We actually even have an app community here on the your Book of Memories app that you can download completely for free on your Android or your Apple iPhone. It would be so cool to see your finished projects and all the different little twists and things that you did to your book. So I'm just going around the perimeter here. Absolutely wonderful. And for the spine, same thing. So I'm gonna get my bone folder and give a nice burnish over the top of all these Teflon backings of the tape. <laughs> it helps it come off a lot easier and it really solidifies that adhesive onto the surface. Now you can add as many or as few strips of this adhesive or any choice favorite adhesive it is that you'd like because this is your book. You make it your way. I'm just here to show you the way that I do it and my favorite supplies. And if you happen to use them, that's wonderful because then you can get the full experience of what it is that I'm teaching. Now that we have these all taped up, I'm gonna start out with just the spine first. So I'm gonna set my pieces off to the side here and I'm gonna prepare them. So I'm totally good to go now. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this and line this up with the very flush top of this. And we should be totally good because we're avoiding those edges there. And you can make a line or make nick marks with your ruler to make sure you're nice and straight, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. Once I got it, I'm gonna give a nice firm press and then bring in our next piece. Now I've got this piece totally prepared and you're probably thinking, Francis, do we need a space in between the chipper pieces? 100% yes. You remember these pieces that we set off to the side earlier? 
we have a total of three thicknesses of the exact chipboard we are using for our covers for this project. That's a perfect amount of distance away. If you wanted to use this technique, 100% do it. It's a great way to begin. I just like to eyeball it just because I've been doing it for so long. And I'm gonna line that up beautifully. Once I'm ready, I'm gonna commit and give it a nice push and repeat the same thing on the other side. And here we have it coming in. Sometimes I have a little afro side show, so excuse me momentarily while I line this up. Otherwise my book is gonna look really laughable. <laughs> and there we have it. That's 100% bingo. The best way to burnish on this is to actually flip it over and burnish on the back. So I'm gonna use a nice flat burnishing technique right here. And I'm gonna go all along the edges and on the inside. Unbelievably wonderful. Now we have quite a bit of overhang right here, so a simple way to take care of that is just to get our paper trimmer and slide our little guy in here. I like to eyeball the edge of this with the one inch mark, and then I just give a nice slice through. Oh my goodness, I see a hummingbird drinking some nectar out of a flower. That is just so adorable. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same thing over on this side. Oh my goodness, we are totally ready. You will notice that there is a larger side over here and that's perfectly good. We're gonna wrap this up anyway. So now I need to miter my corners. So the best way to do that for me is just to get two more scrap sheets and stack them together, this time just two. And then I put them right in the corner and I get my pencil out and I draw a line on the outside edge. And that indicates to me where to trim and where to stop laying my tape once I get there. And that's a bingo. <laughs> it's so awesome, we just use what we already have. So now I'm gonna get my score tape out and I'm gonna unite this piece as if it's just 100% one entire piece. You can go straight over those gaps or you can break them at those points. Totally 100% your choice. You might be able to save you know, an inch or two <laughs> over time. Just around the perimeter for this guy. Now for the cardstock, I'm actually gonna pass that pencil line and stay flush at the bottom, best as I can. <laughs> and then I'm gonna repeat that with each side. Passing that pencil line, staying flush. I like to do some pre-taps along the way to kind of checkpoint myself. Use my finger and we're bingo. Again, I'm gonna use another flat burnish here. And I'm gonna stay burnishing in the direction of the score tape just to ensure we don't get a little wiggly worm. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. This is one of the most essential steps because I've spent a good too long of a time trying to take one of the backings off of the score tape pieces. So this step is super helpful. <laughs> now it's the scissors time to shine. I'm gonna go ahead and actually cut on each corner where we have our pencil line, but I'm gonna expose that pencil line just for safety reasons. Just to leave a little bit more there. The amount of score tape that we waste is so absolutely little. Perfect. I'm gonna repeat that with each corner. I tend to be a minimalist, so I enjoy just using what I already have. But again, you can use anything you want to shape your corners. We end up covering them up. <laughs> Look at that, very small amount of score tape wasted there. And that's phenomenal. Now that we're here, I like to place my thumbs in the very back and fold on the long flaps first and kind of pre-fold. And then I like to give it a nice press with my fingers. And then I come in with my bone folder again and give a nice edge contact here, right at the edge of that chipboard. Just so there's no bubbling once we go to fold this over. And once you're ready, you can remove the backing from the score tape and then we can get this flap stuck down. I like to start in the center first with my thumbs in this orientation and I pull towards myself nice and good there. And then I pull at an outward diagonal motion just to prevent any sort of bubbling <laughs> or wrinkles. Beautiful, we'll come back and give them a nice burnish in a minute. I'm gonna repeat the same thing for this long flap. And you can add extra tape or glue in there if you'd like. I just keep it nice and simple. Edge contact, pre-burnish with our fingers, prepare. 
and center down first. Outward diagonal pulling motion. 100% perfect. I'm going to go ahead and flat burnish again. I don't want to make any little accidents right there. Beautiful. Now I'm going to actually work right here on this corner. It's kind of like wrapping a present. I use this portion of the bone folder to kind of fold that little tiny triangle in towards myself. And I repeat the same thing down at the bottom in the reverse. And really get that stuck in there. And then I pre-burnish again and repeat the same process. Making edge contact. Pre-burnishing with my fingers. And preparing this guy. Beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and solidify that in there by coming in with a flat burnish. And I'm gonna repeat that on this end. We're gonna fold this inward just like wrapping a Christmas present. You'll notice this is straight, and then this comes down at a little angle. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna repeat that exact same thing down here. And it takes practice. The more you do it, the better you get. I like to remind myself that they're, you know, cousins, not twins. <laughs> Pre-burnish, edge contact, press it down, prepare it, and stick it. Solidify it in there, and that is such a cute cover. Unbelievably wow. <laughs> Check out this corner. That is so nice. I love it. So now we're gonna to need to train this cardstock to fall in between the chipboard pieces. So I'm gonna be at a very dramatic slant as I lift and put a little bit of pressure in here. Just a little bit. Fold him up at a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that same thing on this side. Very dramatic slant. Here we go. Wow. We just created the base of our book. I am so unbelievably excited. Now we actually have a gusset hider piece that'll hide these two gaps. So let's go ahead and cut that out. We're gonna need to cut out one piece, nine and three quarters by 12. So we actually ended up needing another sheet of 12 by 12. <laughs> you saw that earlier on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one down. Since he's already 12, all I have to do is go to the nine and three quarter mark. And that's gonna be wonderful. Super simple slice. Now for this, it's always very important to coat the interior of all these tension points here. I'm gonna set my gusset hider piece off to the side and I'm gonna come in with my score tape. <laughs> and I'm not gonna go all the way up or all the way down, but I'm gonna go at the very, very edge of each one of these chipboard pieces. Vital, vital, because we don't want any, we don't want any bubbles happening in this zone. <laughs> They're not the kind of bubbles you wanna invite to your birthday bash, okay? <laughs> so right here at the edge of the spine, right at the edge of the back and front cover. And I even go just a little extra more right here and a little more just because this is where all the tension happens in the book. And then for this gusset hider, I'm just going to go around the perimeter simply. Maybe I'll throw in a couple score tape pieces right here once he adheres. <laughs> Beautiful. You know what time it is. I'm going to give this a nice burnish. Again, in the direction of the tape to keep it nice and simple. Make sure that adhesive sticks on there real good. And then right here on the base book itself. Now I'm going to burnish the absolute daylight side of this spot. Unbelievably perfect. Now let's go ahead and dry fit. It is always important to kind of fit this piece on here before we commit to it all the way. And now because we wrapped our book, it has expanded the size of the book by very slightly of an amount. So this piece fits on here perfectly. Now we're gonna go edge to edge. Now I'm ready to prepare it. <laughs> we are totally ready right now to stick this wonderful cardstock over the top. We're totally safe in this bending zone. And now I'm actually gonna focus bottom left corner and I'm gonna solidify that in there first. Then when I go up, I'm going to make sure my pivoting motion is nice and straight. 
and I'm going to allow this piece to flatten out naturally on its own. Then I'm going to flat guide it, and that's beautiful. Allowing the paper to just do what it naturally wants to do is some of the best methods for applying sticky paper to a surface. <laughs> beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and come back and give everything a nice burnish right here at the edges and a bunch right here towards the spine. Now we have to train another layer of this cardstock to fall in between. So if you bend your book just up a little bit, a nice slant of your bone puller. I'm gonna go ahead and train that to fold upward. Same thing on the other side. Phenomenal. I'm gonna give it a little wiggle. And we are awesome. Now it's actually time for us to start cutting out all the base flaps and pockets and inserts inside the book. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna set this cute little book off to the side and I'm gonna get out my 80 pound cardstock of eight and a half by 11. I'm also actually gonna have my pencil handy because I love to label as I go and my paper trimmer. Now the first set of pieces I'd like for us to cut will be the front inside cover. So it's got this nice hidden pocket back here with a few flaps and some waterfall flaps on the inside. <laughs> so our first main pocket on that particular portion of the book will be one piece five and a half by ten and three quarters. Super simple. In the vertical position of this paper, I'm going to go ahead and cut five and a half. Then I'm going to extend my piece right here and then cut and rotate at ten and three quarters. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and label this guy FIC with a circle for the front inside cover and then I'm going to label him pocket. Absolutely perfect. He's going to go in his own pile right over here. Now the next piece is going to be our A flap. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one piece five and a half by six and a half. Super simple. In the long ways horizontal position I'm going to cut five and a half and save this nice little scrap piece off to the side. I'm going to rotate and go six and a half. Bingo. I'm going to go ahead and label him again FIC circle a flap beautiful job and into the front inside cover pile that we just made earlier the next piece is our b flap one piece five and a half by eight and a half now i don't know if i can get it out of this guy let's try i believe we can go five and a half long ways vertical that's already five and a half and then i'm going to check if the eight and a half is truly eight and a half sometimes it's eight and nine sixteenths it looks like this is perfect. So I'm just totally gonna 100% do that. So I'm gonna go B flat. Okay, perfectly used our scraps like a true scrapbooker right here. FIC, circle, and into the front and side cover pile. Perfect. We're making amazing progress. We also have a C flap, one piece, six and three eighths by nine and three quarters. So I'm gonna get out a new piece right here and cut this down six and three eighths in the vertical position. Six and three eighths is a little tricky. It's right about there, right where you see that line at the end of that orange underneath the translucent plastic. Rotate nine and three quarters. And I'm gonna go ahead and label this again. It's still the front and side cover. So F I C circle, C flap, bingo. Wow, <laughs> we are awesome. Okay, waterfall flaps, a total of four, five and a half by eight. I'm going to go horizontal for these ones. And if you're going to stack them up, just take your time. Make sure they're nice and on top of each other here. This Amazon paper is divine. Absolutely divine. It's exactly eight and a half by 11. So that's, it makes our job a lot easier. So here we have it. Four pieces, WF, waterfall pieces right there, and FIC. So we know, just in case we set our project off to the side and storm away in a nice baggie out of the dust, we know when we come back to it, which pieces are which. Now we're on to cutting out our first set of pages. Page one and four are the same. So that's a total of two pieces, six and a half by nine and one quarter.
And then I'm going to label one of them, page one, and the other, page four. P1 circle and P4 circle, and into their own pile together. Now page one has a pocket. That's what I did for mine, but you can cut out as many of these pockets as you would like because the pocket size fits on every base page. <laughs> so completely customizable. So he is five and a half by 10 and one quarter, just one piece. So for this one, I'm gonna go long ways vertical, five and a half, and give it a flip and cut 10 and one quarter up here. And that is a beautiful pocket. We're gonna put P1 pocket and into the P1 pile. So there's another two pages that are alike, pages two and five. Let's cut those out. A total of two pieces, six and one eighth by nine and one quarter. Perfect, I'm gonna label this one P2 circle and the other one P5 with a circle. And I'm gonna stack them up and you can put them in your pages pile or even off to the side in a different pile is fine too. <laughs> now I last minute decided to add these two cute little extra pieces, two and seven eighths by six and a half. I think we might have a couple pieces in our scrap pile. Let me see. Yes, we do. These are cute additional little flips and flaps for extra added interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my scrap pile right there perfectly and cut out a total of two of these. Beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and label these both EX for extra and stick them in their own pile for now. <laughs> now we have that cool little envelope feature and there's a total of three pieces that create it because it has a pocket and a flap and a base piece. Let's first cut out the base. One piece, five inches by six and a half. So I'm gonna grab a nice new piece here and I am going to go five inches across, long ways horizontal. Rotate six and a half. And for this one, I'm gonna go EN and a circle. And then I'm gonna write base. And I'm gonna stick that in its own pile as well. Now the next piece is its flap, which is super easy. One piece, three inches by six and a half. I'm gonna use this scrap piece right here. And I'm gonna label this one EN with a circle and flap and into the envelope pile. <laughs> and then we also have a wonderful pocket on there. Just one piece, three and a half by seven and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and get a new piece here <laughs> and cut away. Perfect, I'm gonna label this one EN circle and pocket and into the envelope pile. Perfect. So we just completed all of these little trimmings here and these base pockets, little extra flaps and this envelope structure along with these pages as well. So now we're actually on to building up these pockets. So let's go ahead and cut those back inside cover pockets out. The first one is our A pocket, four and a half by eight and a half. Now, can we use this scrap piece? Yes, we might be able to. I'm saying yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out and rotate him here and cut four and a half. And he's already eight and a half inches across, so we're bingo. I'm gonna go BIC circle, A pocket. Now he's also gonna be in his own pile as well. Now the next piece is our B pocket. One piece, seven and a half by eight and a half. And it's already by eight and a half, so we're totally good. Just one slice for that guy. B pocket, BIC, circle, and into the back and side cover pile. Wow, we just totally completed all the base flaps and pockets. We'll come back and cut inserts a little bit later, so let's take a break and actually get to the scoring. So let's go ahead and get our scoreboards out, as well as our little scoring tools. And remember that back and side cover pockets we just cut? Let's go ahead and get those out. Both of these are gonna be scored the same as each other since they're both pockets with the eight and a half inch side along the top. And I'm first gonna score at half an inch. Then I'm actually gonna rotate to the opposite side. I've got the score mark over here now. 
I'm going to go half an inch again. Now you might be wondering, Francis, why don't you just go here and here? The reason I use this technique is because no matter how I cut my paper, from this edge inward is exactly half an inch. <laughs> so that's our first pocket right there. So that's that back inside cover pocket. And now let's go ahead and get the A pocket and line him up again. Eight and a half, half an inch. And opposite side rotation, half an inch again. And that is beautiful. Now the next following pieces can be our front and side cover pieces. So that nice big pile right here, let's go ahead and flip this nice big pile upside down so we can work with it in order. So the first piece in line, you'll probably notice, is the front and side cover pocket. Let's go ahead and line this guy up with a long side at the top, 10 and 3 quarters. And let's go ahead and score at half an inch. And then rotate, opposite side, half an inch again. Now for me, I avoid putting any half inch score mark for the closure parts of my pockets because, you know, I feel a little bit finicky about my inserts bumping into a flap. So that drives me just a little bit off the wall. <laughs> and I don't have any other walls to fall off of anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this off into the finished pile right here. And then I'm gonna grab my next piece. Now you'll notice this one is the A flap. Let's go ahead and locate the six and a half inch side and line that up at the top. And let's score first at half an inch. And next at one inch. Beautiful gusset there and that'll make more sense as we continue into the finished front and side cover pile right there. Now the next piece right here is our B flap. Let's go ahead and line him up long side at the top which is eight and a half and let's first again score at half an inch and then at one. Keeping everything in their piles. I know I might sound like a broken record but it just helps me stay a bit more organized and everything comes together effortlessly. So the next following piece you will notice will be our C flap. Our C flap needs to be scored with the short end along the top, which is six and three eighths. And first at half an inch. And seven eighths of an inch right before the one. And that's perfect. Into the front and side cover finished pile right here. And then we have all these little waterfall flaps. We just got four of them. They're each going to be scored the same as each other. Long side at the top, eight inches, simply at half an inch. I'm just gonna slide them off to the side into the finished pile when I'm done. Perfect. Oh my goodness, okay. So now let's go ahead and grab out page one and four, and these are gonna be scored just like each other with the six and a half inch side along the top. And we're first gonna score three quarters of an inch and one inch. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that with this one. Six and a half inches along the top, three quarters of an inch and one. Perfect, I'm gonna slide them off to the side and that's wonderful. And his pocket that accompanies him is gonna be lined up with the 10 and one quarter inch side along the top and half an inch, you guessed it. Opposite side, half an inch again. Beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and set this pocket again on top of page one and then we've got pages two and five, super easy. Six and one eighth inch side along the top and we're first going to score at three eighths of an inch and five eighths of an inch. Just a quarter of an inch over and that's 100% bingo. I'm gonna put them in the other pages pile, which is perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and score the next one, six and one eighth along the top, three eighths of an inch and five eighths of an inch. That is phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and set these off to the side and get the next pieces. Let's go ahead and get out these cute little extras right here. And let's line these both up the same as each other with the two and seven eighth inch side along the top. And let's first even score smaller here at the quarter inch mark. And then at five eighths. Beautiful. I'm gonna line up again, two and seven eighth inch side along the top, score at quarter of an inch 
and 5 eighths of an inch. This is unbelievable. <laughs> now let's go ahead and get out our pieces for our envelope. So we've got a base, a flap, and a pocket. So right here, the envelope base, we're just going to line this one up with the 5 inch side along the top and first score at 1 quarter of an inch. and five-eighths of an inch. Absolutely perfect. And then we have the flap. So I'm going to line him up with the three-inch side along the top and simply score at half an inch. Beautiful. Now the pocket. I'm going to go ahead and line this one up with the seven-and-a-half-inch side along the top and create a simple pocket. Half an inch, rotate, and half an inch again. And that is perfect. We just completed all the scoring for the entire book, and now we can actually make some room so we can start folding on our score lines and attaching our tape. So I'm going to take out my two nice little extra pieces here, and you'll notice a bumpy side of the score mark where it's protruding outward. I like to fold towards that side, and I'm also going to have my bone folder handy right here and give it a nice center up and down, even motion. And then I'm going to get that next score mark, and again, Fold towards the bumpy side of the score mark to create that nice traditional card maker's fold. And it just, it looks super cute. It's a great habit to get into, depending on whether you're making a flap or a pocket. You never have to worry about it using this technique. I'm going to go ahead and solidify that in as well with a nice burnish. Now I'm going to keep everything in their piles again. <laughs> you're, you know, you're probably going to want to throw your phone out the window. But I am 100% breaking records right now. <laughs> I like to keep everything in their piles just so I can keep track of everything. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that off into their own little stack right here, our little extra pieces. So I have all my pages here. I like to fold towards the bumpy side and then give it a nice up and down, even burnish, just like this, because I don't wanna change the shape of that flap. And then I come back and work this other one here. And I tend to flip it over and expose that gusset. And then I'm gonna repeat that again with my page one. So I have one and four here. They got, they are the same construction as well as page two and five. Just towards the bumpy side and if you want to get the other side you can give it a flip and go towards it just like that. Awesome. So in its own pile right there I'm going to stick even these ones on top of that. And now I'm going to be bringing in this nice big front inside cover pile. So we've got all our little waterfall flaps with just a simple score mark right there. And anytime you come to one of these pages again, towards the bumpy side, two close score marks, we just flip our page over and again, Fold right towards that protruding point of that score mark. Give it a flip and solidify it in. I'm keeping all my front and side cover pieces together. Beautiful. I just finished burnishing everything from my front and side cover pile. And I'm going to stack them up and give myself a little bit of room here. And now the back inside cover has some simple pockets. Beautiful. Setting them off to the side now and bringing in the last few pieces here. I've got a pocket for the page one. Now you're probably thinking, Francis, why are there so many different pages with multiple score marks. Well, once you see the book start to come together, it'll make total sense. <laughs> I'm actually going to put it on top of the other pages. Last but not least, we've just got our wonderful little envelope pieces here, the base, flap, and the pocket. And how wonderful are we? We are totally done scoring and folding on all of our score lines right here. I am super excited because that actually moves us on to the taping stage. 
So from this position right here on this envelope base, I'm actually going to use quarter inch score tape right here, but let's first locate the proper side for this. So when I have this in this position, I see the bumpy parts of the score marks, right? Now I'm gonna to flip to the opposite side, which we don't see any bumpy score marks here. That is actually the mountain side and that's where the tape is going to go. So I'm gonna to have to flatten my piece out, get my score tape right here and stick it on. And sometimes I even like to come back with my acrylic block to kind of help me tear that backing off easy. It prepares me for my next piece, nice and straight. And I don't have any overhang here, so it eliminates a step. <laughs> so I am excited. Okay, so that's perfect. I'm also going to get the envelope flap right here. And with the same quarter inch score tape, I'm going to locate the bumpy side for these ones and close this pocket down with some quarter inch score tape since I already have it in my hand. Beautiful. Now I'm going to grab my 3 eighths of an inch score tape and flip this on the other side. And again, on the mountain side right here. I'm gonna stick 3 eighths of an inch score tape right on this half inch flap. I'm gonna center it pretty nicely between the score mark and the edge of the flap. I'm gonna do that for both sides. And that's just beautiful. Wow. We'll come back and burnish these in a minute. Now we also have this super simple flap again on the mountain side. I'm going to be sticking this one little tape. I hope you guys are having fun. I'm so excited to be here with you. I cannot wait to cut into the paper. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna stack these on top of each other. And again, we'll come back and burnish these in a minute. I'm gonna slide these off to the side and bring in the next following pieces. So let's go ahead and mess around with the back and side cover pockets. Same technique, mountain side for these. 3 eighths of an inch score tape on these half inch flaps. Beautiful. That is a bingo, and you know what? I close all my pockets down again, like I mentioned earlier, with quarter inch score tape. And that's perfect. I like to do a little pre-burnish with my fingers, and we'll come back to him in a little bit. But here's his other pocket. I'm gonna repeat the steps. Excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and stack these up and actually put them into one single pile. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these over here. <laughs> now again, on the mountain side, you'll see page one and four actually have a really big three quarters of an inch. So five eighths fits perfect down here along with one strip of quarter inch tape. So that's what I'm gonna do for both of these. And now page two and five are the same, so I'm just gonna add a quarter inch <laughs> right at the edge of the flap. Just staying right at the edge. Right here on the mountain side. Perfect. And we'll come back and burnish these in a minute. And then bring in its pocket. Closure down inside right here. And on the mountain side, three eighths of an inch score tape. So this pocket right here that I just finished is going to go into this pile that I put over here next to the envelopes and the back and side cover pockets. And while we're in this pile, let's go ahead and grab out that envelope and set it off into its own pile right there. Now I'm gonna go on to these extra little pieces right here again on the mountain side. If you have <laughs> smaller score tape, that'd be awesome. But I just have quarter inch right here and I'm gonna line this up and break it off at this point. And then before we actually stick it, I'll show you that technique of simply making that score tape just a little bit smaller. Beautiful. Absolutely phenomenal. These little extra pieces are going to go in the no miter pile that we just created of page one and the envelope base. So I'm going to put the extras right over there. Now the next pile we have is our front and side cover pieces. Again, using the same technique, the half inch score marks, take three eighths of an inch score tape. And then I'm gonna use my acrylic block and I'm on the mountain side. And each pocket has a closure on the inside <laughs> of quarter inch score tape. 
So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Perfect. Now that I'm here, I'm actually going to get out my bone folder and give everything a nice burnish. Just completed attaching tape to all the necessary pieces. This is the front and side cover pieces. These are the waterfalls here in their own pile. And the front and side cover C flap, A flap, and the pocket. I'm also going to give this pocket a flip and burnish right here where the score tape closure is. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to forget that little guy in there. And right here on that brilliant B flap. So now that we have that, I'm going to continue keeping everything in their certain piles here. So with the remainder of pieces, I'm going to give them a nice burnish. Awesome. I'm right here on my no miter pages. <laughs> page five, page four page two, and then we have two extras, the envelope base and page one. A hundred percent no miter on these. It's easy to get caught up and you get feeling good and then you accidentally miter into it and then you gotta remake your piece. <laughs> and we are totally burnished and ready to go. Are you ready to start assembling these pieces onto our book? Perfect. We do have a couple fun things that we can do to some of our pockets and pieces. So if you wanted to follow along with these angling tips, let's go ahead and get out our pencils and our rulers and let's get started. So in this book, I have two main little fun angles here. The first one is this envelope that actually has a cute little pocket and a flap. So this flap is angled, so we're gonna work on that. So we can go ahead and locate that out of our pile. It's called our envelope flap. And then our last little angle guy is this back inside cover pocket, the smaller one. So let's go ahead and locate that. It's actually our A pocket from our back inside cover pieces. So again, let's start out with this one. So I'm going to have my little envelope flap off to the side and my score tape on my back and side cover A pocket is located towards the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and give this a flip and tuck these half inch flaps back, get my ruler and my pencil, and we can begin marking on this piece. So I'm going to get my ruler and lay it straight over the top and kind of center my ruler in. As you can see, it's basically seven and a half, but technically when we score and create pockets, our pieces shrink because we end up taking the shape off to the sides and creating a three-dimensional piece. So we got seven and a half basically centered in to where I have my ruler left and right. And then I'm gonna mark the center of seven and a half, which is three and three quarters. And if you ever wanna check if that's the center, you can just drag three and three quarters here. And if you have the same overlapping on each side, then you're totally 100% good. Once I get that mark, I'm gonna go vertical with my roller and make a generally straight line up and down. And once I have that cute little line, I'm going to go down right here to where I've got the ruler lined up with the bottom piece at three and one quarter. And right on this vertical line, I'm going to mark at the zero. That's going to be our center point where the angle gets created. We're going to go straight to the corner from that one and three quarter upward right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get my paper trimmer out and I'm going to line this in. Now I'm going to have my little flaps folded out like this and because it's hard to see, I'm going to angle this so I can show you a bit better. I'm going to come over the top and actually line that initial crosshair right there in between both of these ridges of the Fisker's paper trimmer. That's going to be my initial puncture, but I'm going to need to rotate until that corner gets into the groove right here. So if I were to be in the folded position, you could probably see that corner a bit better. Right where that paper trimmer goes, I'm going to be right in there but I first have to align myself with that wonderful crosshair in the center. Then I pivot my piece and I'm gonna start on the interior first. And then I'm gonna lift and reinsert and go bit by bit until I find that center mark. And uh, I'm gonna repeat the same thing, but this time I'm gonna fold that flat back. And pivoting until that corner meets that paper trimmer blade location. And that's a bingo. We've got our super cute angle right here. We got our closure still at the bottom because we were marking in the proper orientation. And now that's bingo. I'm gonna make a little bit of room here. I'm gonna set this awesome pocket off to the side and now I'm gonna bring in that wonderful envelope flap. 
with the envelope flap in this orientation with the score mark located at the top. I'm gonna to bring my ruler right here and line up the zero with the left side edge. And I'm gonna get my pencil. And I'm gonna mark the center at three and one quarter. Just a little neck mark right there. And now I'm gonna actually tuck this half inch flap back and bring my ruler off to the side, leaving a little bit of the paper exposed, lining up my zero with the folded edge at the top. And I'm gonna mark down in at one and one eighth. That's the mark that begins our angle right there. I'm gonna repeat that with this little side right here. One and one eighth down, right from the top. Zero starting at the folded edge. And those nick marks are totally gonna to be lined up and create that nice little angle. I'm gonna start from the outside and then line those nick marks in there and cut in towards the center. Again, from the outside in towards that point, just so I don't mess the paper up and we're 100% in business. Wow. Now this next step is mitering. So very simply, I'm gonna get out my Tim Holtz scissors and very carefully make sure I'm only mitering the pieces that are outside of the no miter pile. And now I've got my wonderful little flap right here. Very simply, I'm just gonna start from the outside, find that angle and cut inward, just like that. And I'm gonna repeat that on the same side right over here. And from the outside, cutting outward just so I get in the habit of, you know, making sure I don't cut into my piece. Because if I start from the outside and cut in, I might alter our wonderful little guy. <laughs> so now that I got him all totally good to go, I'm gonna come back and actually repeat this for each piece, except the no miter pile. <laughs> this guy ended up actually getting angled already after we sliced through. So this is perfect. This is the confetti making stage. I love it. And if you accidentally cut into your piece a little bit, that's okay. You can always remake it. We can always adapt to anything that happens here in the paper crafting world. Anything is possible. We can always fix it. Perfect. And before we get too far, I'm on my front and side cover right here. These are waterfalls. These also have a beautiful cohesive look when they stay unmitered. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that off, four of them, into the unmitered pile. And right here, when you see close score marks next to each other, just focus on the one that's a half inch flat. And we'll cut right straight from there. If you accidentally cut into this gusset, that's okay. But really, we're just focusing right here on this half inch flat. Beautiful. Just finished making confetti. You can go ahead and set this off into, you know, an envelope, ship it to your best friend. Let them know that you're ready to party because we've got enough confetti for a birthday bash. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, we actually have completed all the marking up, scoring, burnishing, attaching tape. We are ready to actually start assembling these beautiful pieces into our book. So let's make some room and bring our beautiful books out. I've got my nice mighty guy here and I'm gonna actually have him in this position where this is totally smooth. Since we do have an on cover pocket, again, like I said, I wanna make sure our entry is nice and smooth. So I combined the gusset hider piece also as a chipboard hiding piece. Otherwise we will be encountering some sort of, and I mean, we could put our design paper all the way in there and overlap that like this so that our pages slide in nicely. But for me, I like to use minimal scrap of paper so we can save paper for other pieces. So that's the reason I did that. So in this orientation where this paper is covering mostly on the left side, I'm first going to attach this wonderful front and side cover pocket. So if you wanna go ahead and locate that, that would be wonderful. The closure is actually going to be in towards the spine, but we do have to be super careful because when we fold this up, you'll notice there's like a shadow we wanna make sure we stay directly on the front and side cover. We don't wanna creep into the space. Otherwise, our book will kinda of close a little bit funny. <laughs> so to prepare this front and side cover pocket, I'm gonna remove the bottom Teflon there and stick those half inch flaps on. So again, closure right here on the right side towards the spine. And you can just kinda of let your piece sit there and wiggle it until you're in the spot that makes you feel comfortable. Sometimes pockets shrink. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm right where I need to be. You'll be able to see how it kind of centers in. You might have a little bit of the cover showing top and bottom, and that's perfectly okay. 
most importantly, we're staying away from that space and staying just on the chipboard. Once you got it, give it a nice flat guiding and we're in business. Beautiful burnish right here. We can check for an interference and we're 100% bingo. Now the next piece we're gonna stick will be those nice little flaps from the front and side cover pile. So that's that nice A flap. So let's go ahead and stick him first. We're gonna stick him in the open position and we're gonna focus on just this half inch score mark being stuck along the top of the pocket we just stuck down. But there's an important detail here, so I'm gonna slide this down. I'm actually going to lift my pocket by a hair and go over to the left by a hair. And I'm just gonna exaggerate that movement just so you understand what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this piece. Now with the cover, if your pocket ended up being a little bit down, let's make sure we're lining the edge of the actual chipboard cover with this half inch score mark. Now once you get aligned, pull up a little bit by a hair, ever so slightly, and a little bit to the left. So let's try it, right about here. So that score mark is actually hanging off the cover ever so slightly. And I went this way just a little bit more. And that's perfect. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to that bottom flap, which is our B flap. Again, in the open position, which just means what it looks like when it's open. And we're gonna repeat that same thing down here, but this time, pull down a hair and go to the left. So let's do it. Hanging them off the cover. That pocket might actually be slightly smaller than the cover, but we're focusing on this half inch score mark, hanging off the cover just a little bit. And over to the left. Nice and straight. And there you have it. Burnish him on there, and he looks like this. Just hanging off right there. And over to the left just a little bit. These tiny little details actually make a huge difference. Instead of cutting our mats out differently, our mats get to be just a solid quarter number or a solid half instead of dealing with sixteenths. So we've got these cute little, oh my goodness, flaps on here. Now the next flap is actually this nice big C flap. He's going to actually be attached in the open position again. And this time we're going to focus on this half inch flap lining up with the edge of this pocket. And again, the same trick, we're gonna slightly go over to the left, away from the spine, ever so slightly. So take your time, work at your own pace, make sure it comes out the way that you want it. And here we are, that is excellent. Now we've got this beautiful guy in there, love it. Any interference here with the flap bumping into the spine? No, how about these? We don't want to bump into that spine either. No, we are 100% golden. Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fun. <laughs> now we have those four waterfall flaps to actually put on the interior of these flaps. So let's go ahead and grab those out. Those were in the no miter pile. We have a total of four of them. We're gonna focus on one at a time. We're gonna stay within this region, exposing those score marks. Now, because the cover ended in a quarter mark, a three quarter mark, our half inch flaps are not multiples of half inches. So what I'm gonna actually do is go down about a quarter inch from this top score mark, and that's where I'm gonna begin my first waterfall. Now, sometimes it's inevitable that we're going to touch the adhesive, but after I take that Teflon backing off, I'm gonna fold this back, and in the folded position, I'm gonna line this edge up. You can even get your roller, or if you don't mind, you could start way at the top and go all the way down, but you're just gonna have a bigger gap down here. If that bothers you, you can try this. I'm gonna go quarter inch right here exposing that score mark quarter inch below that half inch score mark of the previous flap up here and now i'm watching my pivoting motion making sure i'm not overlapping that score mark right there keeping it exposed flattening it out guiding it committing and burnishing unbelievable let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see this better so this is our large c flap in the open position and here's our base back of the book Got another waterfall flap right here, preparing. So it's great to frequently wash our hands because sometimes it's inevitable that we're touching the adhesive again. This folded edge right underneath. And sometimes we need to go to the left more than we think we should. Watching this pivoting motion here. And we want to make sure we're not overlapping the score mark to where we can't see it. We want to keep it exposed. Beautiful job. Line up that top and let it fall. 
excellent. This is the technique that I use every single time I make waterfalls and they always turn out wonderful as long as I take my time. Beautiful burnish. Let's solidify those in there. Perfect. Quarter inch downward centers these waterfall flaps directly on. That is beautiful. Love it. A hundred percent love it. <laughs> now we have a nice even gap right down here at the bottom. Instead of this being really large, we just have this. I love it. Let's go ahead and check if they interfere with the base spine. And no, everything's working out beautifully. That all folds up and comes together. And we're looking nice and boxy here. Excellent. <laughs> let's now go ahead and assemble our back and side cover pieces. So let's go ahead and get out that nice B pocket for the BIC and the A pocket as well. Let's first focus on this nice big one. I'm gonna make sure that the closure is located down at the bottom and I'm gonna prepare this piece. Stick my half inch flaps over the top and get these little guys prepared here. Now with the closure down at the bottom, I'm gonna focus on the bottom right corner and I'm gonna align that with the cover here, right edge to edge. And now once I have that corner solidified, I'm gonna focus on my pivoting motion here and I'm gonna kind of push down. You can feel that flap kind of accordion, accordion. I make up words, okay? It's pretending it's an accordion. I'm gonna line up that edge with the edge of the folded pocket and then I'm gonna take a look at my bottom. If I have to make any last minute tweaks, kind of push my paper and flat guide it all the way. And that's gonna end up in a perfect spot. So depending on what edge we start on, we just naturally let the page fall and it ends up exactly where it should be. And that's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that on. Now, right where we stuck that pocket, I'm gonna bring in our nice angly one here and prepare it too. We're gonna stick this pocket exactly down bottom right corner on top of the previous pocket we just stuck. Let's do it. Edge to edge, bottom to bottom, and let's guide it. Nice and flat. Unbelievable. Huh. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna take a moment to erase some of these pencil marks so I can really see the effect of what we just accomplished. 100% gorgeous. <laughs> so right now, I'm gonna actually take this book and make a little bit of room and set it off to the side. And I'm gonna bring in my nice big page one. Now in this orientation where the adhesive is facing the work surface and we actually see the bumpy parts of the score marks, in this position, I'm actually gonna go get that nice big page one pocket and then we're gonna stick this on here. Now the closure is gonna be located towards these little score marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it. And I'm gonna line this guy up right on top of him. Now we're gonna focus on the score mark that's closest to the right. So we're gonna be focusing on this one. Not this one over here, but this one. That's where the edge of this is gonna go. An even easier way is to actually just focus on this bottom right corner lining up with this bottom right one. And again, sometimes pockets shrink, so you may need to lift up by a hair just to kind of even that out. Lift up ever so slightly, almost a sixteenth of an inch sometimes. Edges are looking beautiful. Flat guide it. And that's wonderful. Wow. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this on. Now we have a simple little tube pocket and you can repeat this page on the other pages if you wanted. It's the same measurements and you would just stick it on and create more if you wanted. Now that we have page one assembled, I'm gonna set him off to the side. <laughs> yep, it's a boy. And then I'm actually gonna bring in the base for the envelope. And we're gonna situate our cute little pocket and flap on this one. So again, with the adhesive facing the work surface and the bumpy parts of the score mark, facing up <laughs> right at us. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cute little pocket and you're getting the hang of this now. We're gonna stick the closure in towards this side. Now this is when the score marks are a good guide for us because this pocket is not the same width as the pocket before. So that's why I'm gonna use that score mark as a guide right there. Closure in towards the left. And again, you can totally get your nose and your work surface and see exactly 
how this page underneath is a bit bigger than your score pocket. If you center it on, only you and I are going to know. <laughs> That's our secret. Okay? Perfect. Look at us. Oh my goodness gracious, look at what we have just done. Now you already know. You know this guy goes in here. Open position, half inch score mark. At the very edge of this piece right here. Okay, so we just have this pocket in here. He's gonna go right here. Now we're not doing any fancy uh, hanging off. We're just we're just lining him up right directly on top, just the traditional way. And burnish. We are 100% bingo. We've got a total working pocket right here. You know what? Since this is the only flap that has a magnet, let's go ahead and get those magnets out. It's always important when I go off and design my books that I leave enough space for this magnet to not be too close to any edges of a flap or a base pocket, just because we want to make sure that when we get design paper on here, we cover it up really, really well. So right here seems like a balanced point. Super easy. You just stick a little bit of adhesive there, stick that guy on. I'm going to go vertical with a strip of tape to solidify him. And then I'm going to get the other magnet, let him click on however he feels like it, add some more tape on him, remove the backing, and then just guide this flap on top and stick them. Perfect. I even could have went in just a little bit more. That would have caused this one to go this way. But you know what? We're good. We are totally good right here. If you wanted to go a little bit more in, the left edge of your magnet could be possibly 7 eighths of an inch away from this right edge of the pocket. And that would be a wonderful spot for you. <laughs> but for me, that works perfectly. <laughs> I do have an entire class on how I go about designing my albums. And so I'll leave that link down in the description for you if you were interested in that. Now, perfect. Now, since we completed assembling our little pieces, we can start sticking our pages onto our spine of our book. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring him in again. And we're gonna focus right here. Let's go ahead and grab out our page one. We just stuck a nice big base pocket on him. And I'm gonna actually prepare him. And now this is going to make sense why we actually did not miter these particular pieces. <laughs> So there's quite a big large flap here to compensate for the width and size of this. And I did make this faux pouch quite thick only because I know we're going to be housing some photos on those waterfall flaps and those tend to get pretty big. So we've got a drop in right here of three quarters of an inch that this will be compensated for. Again, I do have a tutorial on how I design my albums from scratch. So if you wanted to see that totally hundred percent, go check that out. So now you'll notice before you stick this guy on, you've got about a quarter inch top and bottom of the cover exposed, and that's 100% on purpose. I think it's a nice traditional look for these mini albums where the pages are smaller than the cover. So again, just like we did before, we have to make sure we're staying just on the spine so this edge is meeting up right at that point. We want to make sure we're avoiding being in the space, but right there. Now, if you wanted to mark with your <laughs> eyeballs like me crazy, you can go quarter inch with your ruler if you wanted, or you can just <laughs> go straight away. And I just did that. And I love it. Let me check for interference here. Are we good? A hundred percent. Oh my goodness. We just got our first page on the inside of our book. The next page, and you can really interchange these however you want. I'm going to backwards engage this score mark. Just like this. Now we have like this flat laying style. So this is like the hybrid hinge technique I was talking to you about. That's just what I call it. It's pretty fun. Beautiful. Now the following piece I want to put on is our page two. So let's go ahead and get that nice base page two out. And now you're starting to really see. I'm going to go ahead and prepare him. Adhesive face down. And I'm going to buck him right up against the previous one. It's going to look like he just grew there. Let's do it. We just aligned our page one so we kind of have an idea of where we're going. And that it's great. Let's go ahead and burnish that on. Beautiful. Now I'm going to give another page flip and backwards engage those score marks as well. I'm just going to pull on this. Beautiful. We got page two on. Now because I'm a dork, I decided to call this page three when really page three gets stuck on to page four. So after page one and two, we grab four and stick it here. Same technique. Bucking it up right up against there. And that's wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and burnish that now. 
And then let's come in with our little envelope page three structure here and prepare him as well. Now he goes directly on top of page four's little hybrid hinge. Now I just like to tuck this little adhesive back, cute little trick here, fold it onto itself and then there's no adhesive overlapping anymore. Then you just can choose wherever you want to go. You can go all the way up, all the way down, in the middle, or somewhere in between. I think I'm going to go somewhere right about here. And that is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice burnish now. Beautiful. Now after page three <laughs> and page four, let's go ahead and now prepare our page five. And buck it up right up against that just like we have been doing. You are doing a phenomenal job. Wow. <laughs> it's on. Backwards engage. And now we can add our cute little extra pieces. So I'm going to go back to the front so we can see what we just did. So we got a page one with the pocket. The next one is the base page right here. Now that's where I put in my first little guy. He's already prepared, but let me show you again with another one right here. Now the hanging over adhesive, I just flicked it onto itself. So now there's no adhesive overlapping and it just sticks to itself right there. And you could decide to put this flap anywhere and everywhere on your book, really your choice. I'm going to go right up against right after page one and we're hitting up page one, bucking up again right there on the back of him. Backwards engagement. Beautiful. So now we have this. Super cute. Here we go. We're going to flip page two, flip page three, four, and right after four, we're going to stick another of these cute little guys right in here. Anywhere you want. Perfect. <laughs> engagement, engagement, and we got our wedding rings on. <laughs> we are totally 100% ready to start cutting out some white picture mats so we can start figuring out where our photographs are going to go. But actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and cut some inserts out first. I'm going to go ahead and get my paper trimmer and my wonderful black card stock out. <laughs> so we only have a few inserts to go. Let's first cut out our A. One piece, five and a half by eight and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and get this piece and go long ways horizontal at five and a half. Save that nice scrap piece, rotate, extend, and go to eight and one quarter right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and label him A and set him off into his own pile. And then we have a B, one piece, four and one quarter by six and one quarter. I'm going to go ahead and use this scrap one. And then I'm going to actually label this one B and stick him into the pile. And we have a C, one piece, six by eight and one quarter. You are doing so awesome. Your book is going to turn out brilliant. Let's go ahead and cut this down. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe how much progress we are making. Let's go ahead and label him C and off into the finished inserts pile. And now we have a D. One piece, five and a half by six and one quarter. I'm going to get a brand new piece here. And that is a D. Last piece is one E. And that is the letter E for elephant. <laughs> Into the finished inserts pile and we are doing awesome. Let's go ahead and now actually cut out our picture mats. So we're gonna need a total of 19 pieces of our A's, five and one quarter by seven and one quarter. An easy way to achieve that would be just to probably stack up about three pieces or so. This is my lightweight, smooth textured cardstock right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and go long ways horizontal first. And we can get two per sheet. I'm going to go five and a quarter here. And stack them up nice and neat. Five and a quarter here. And then seven and one quarter. Long ways just like this. Right there. You kind of have to imagine that one. I'm going to do this until I have 19. Perfect. I have a total of 19 of my A picture mats, which is just the cardstock that I stamped my little photo on. And that is five and one quarter 
by seven and one quarter. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side and cut out five B's, five and one quarter by five and one quarter this time. So just a cute little square, just five of them. Perfect. I've got a total of five pieces, five and one quarter by five and one quarter, and these are our B's. You can even label these as well. We know those 19 stack is our A's, so we could just label these B. And into the finished picture map pile. And then we have four by six. I'm actually going to save these little guys, because we're going to come back and use these little scrap pieces in a minute. But for now, I'm going to grab some new sheets here and get that nice, simple piece out. <laughs> And then I'm going to go ahead and label this one C and into the finish pile. So we have a total of 10 D's two by two, which is super simple. I'm going to get them right out of here. Wonderful. I just completed my little D's right here and you can label these all if you want, or just the very top one. We don't have very many. <laughs> and they're easy to tell the difference. Now we can actually move on to the stamping. And of course, this is totally optional, so you can skip this step if you want. Once I get mine stamped, I'm gonna start figuring out where to plug them in to the book. <laughs> so I love adding these little camera stamps to my books because when I do go and sell them at a little craft event, it gives the recipient an idea of where the photographs go. <laughs> and we know first things first, that these little tiny squares are easily squares, so we don't have to worry about vertical or horizontal. I'm just going to stamp super simple like this. I lightly coated and evenly coated this. I'm going to find the center, apply a nice even amount of pressure, and I got a little stamp right there. How fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and do that again with you. And that's perfect. I love it so much. I'm going to repeat that with the rest. Perfect. All my cute little guys are totally ready to go. I'm going to slide them off to the side to dry. And even if you wanted to kind of dry them a bit quicker, you can get some scrap paper out and lay it over the top, burnish. And then you got some residual ink picked up and you pick a new spot and you can kind of make it dry a little bit quicker <laughs> if you wanted to, or you can just kind of let that air dry and move on to your next one. So I've got this little C. I'm going to stamp him vertically. Perfect. And if yours turns out a little bit funky on one side, you could just totally 100% switch it and you got a second chance right on the back. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. Perfect. Now our five and one quarter B's are just total squares, so we can 100% just stamp right in the center. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and stack these up together and set them off to the side. And then I'm going to bring in the last major stack of 19 A's right here. Now, most of these I'm going to stamp in the vertical position because that's just the book design. But uh, some of our inserts right here actually can house some landscape photos. So I'm going to pick one, two, three of them to actually be stamped horizontally. And then the rest. I'm going to do vertically. Perfect. I've got all my pieces stamped and now it's time for us to get our ATG guns out so we can start adhering our beautiful little picture mats onto our books. <laughs> so I've got my nice big book right here and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to focus right here on page one. And I'm actually going to grab out this A and I'm going to stick him right here. Now that provides an open space for design paper here. So you can actually decide whether you want to go all the way down or all the way up. Totally 100% your choice. This advanced tape gliding gun is perfect for this. I'm going to coat the perimeter and just a little strip on the inside for each one of my pieces. Super quick matting. So you'll see there's an eighth of an inch border left and right. So I'm going to be away from that score mark here and an eighth of an inch from the top. And that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to have the bone folder handy and I am just beyond excited right now. I'm going to follow my prototype. So I'm going to go ahead and see what the next piece was. So once I turn the page, I actually have one of those little squares just for variation, mixing things up. I went all the way on the top. So let's go ahead and do it. 
So again, you can decide where you want to put this. Here I am, top left corner, focusing, eighth of an inch, left and right, and top. And allowing that just to fall on there. Give it a nice, gentle burnish. We don't want to smash the piece underneath. And that's awesome. So you'll notice again right here, you can choose to stick your two by two guys on right now, or you could do it a little bit later when you know where your design paper is going to go. For me, I'm gonna do one all the way up and one all the way down. So here I go. Stuck a little bit of white paper back there just so you can see right here, eighth of an inch border. Gorgeously right there. Burnishing. <laughs> oh my goodness, here we are making some serious progress. When I turn that over, I actually want one of these in the middle. So I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna stick these down just so I can find that center point really nicely. And then I'll get that middle measurement there. And then I'm gonna come in with my little guy right in the center so I can kind of see where I'm going here. I actually want these top and bottom ones to be design paper on the next one. So I just use those as a reference. Burnishing it on, and that is adorable. The next piece I actually ended up doing was another nice big 5x7 vertical spot, which is right here. Now because I know I'm going to have design paper down here, I want to kind of switch it up. So I'm going to go bottom for this one. Perfect. And I'm going to give it another flip and see what I did on my prototype. Looks like I repeated that same thing here. So that's what I'm gonna do, or do I wanna go up? Because I do have two pictures over layering right there and two design papers, so yeah, I wanna go diagonal. So that's what I'm gonna do there. <laughs> now, if you notice your little guy's getting smashed, you could just open this little flap. Once we get some design paper on there and another piece of cardstock and our photographs, everything's gonna start lifting and becoming more supportive. So we're gonna be totally okay. So I'm gonna go bottom left for this piece. You can even open up your bottom flap as well, too, if you feel like you're kind of smushing them a little bit too much. <laughs> and for burnishing purposes, that's also a great idea. Here we are. This is a handmade book. Be easy on yourself. When you go and construct these, I have to remember to be easy on myself as well. Sometimes I can't look out for every single mystery. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and give this a flip. And now this is where I liked to put a lot of other two by twos. So mine was assembled. Now this may change for me because I'm not entirely sure what paper I'm gonna have, but the general concept is I'm gonna have three spaces for design paper there. So it's gonna look something about like this. And I think that's pretty adorable. What do you think? <laughs> so I'm gonna go top right here, all the way to the left here, and bottom right. But first I'm gonna put my top and bottom one on first. That way I can kind of tell where I am for my middle one. So I'm gonna go top right, next to that score mark, eighth of an inch away, and eighth of an inch top. Same thing down here at the bottom. And then now I have a roundabout idea where this guy's gonna go. Find that nice eighth of an inch border. It'll be more at a diagonal. So your points of your white cardstock points should be facing each other, and you'll be good. Wonderful. Oh my goodness gracious. I cannot believe how awesome we are right now. I'm gonna go right here, right next door. An A piece, burnishing. And now I'm gonna give it a nice flip and I'm gonna repeat that same thing right here. Unbelievable brilliance, okay? The brilliance is afroing right now and that is <laughs> ridiculously adorable. We don't even have design paper on here yet, okay? I just have, I'm just a fanatic for paper, as you can hear. Okay, bingo. I'm gonna actually go top and bottom for this next one right here, just like we did previously. I really have a good feeling about that. Right here, in between the edge of the flap and the score mark, down at the bottom, same thing. And you are totally getting the hang of this. I love the idea of having white cardstock and black cardstock to contrast with your photographs. It just brings out just this amazing huh, quality that I just love. So now you can repeat that, or you could do two more photos back here. We have a total of 10 pieces of these. Now you could have waited until you knew exactly how you wanted your design paper to look. You could totally add these two by twos on later, but this is what I'm going for right now. And I'm in love. Wow, we've got a couple more pieces to add here to our base pages. I have a one of these <laughs> right here. I'm totally adding it. 
This is a five and a quarter by five and a quarter. I believe this was a B. So he's gonna go down there. Now again, I know it's kind of hard to see, but here we are. Eighth of an inch border, bottom right and on the left side. Burnishing it in. Now we have this beautiful cascade of all design papers that are kind of diagonal with each other instead of over overlaying on top of each other. So we're, we're good. Provides a nice balanced adventure for the eyes. At least for mine anyway. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go ahead and flip that and stick another big one up here. Now you'll notice this is a repetition of the one underneath it. So we do have to remember in many albums there's overlaying papers. Now the reason I'm doing it for this one is because I would rather have these lines separating between these. If I were to lower this, for some reason I don't like parallel lines going together. Um, so that's like the same length as this pocket. So I wanted to break it up by creating a little bit of a division there. That's the way I like to decorate my books. A hundred percent love it. Unbelievable. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this up and get more of these square guys and put them on the interior of our top flap of our faux little pouch where we're going to have the little swivel. <laughs> okay, so beautiful. Now you could decide around the corners. Right now you can do a design in here and you'll have to do the same design here. So if you wanted to do a decorative corner punch, you would do it now. For me, I think I'm going to keep it as it is. <laughs> here he comes. Beautiful eighth of an inch, left, right, top, bottom. Right away from that score mark. Burnishing it on. And I'm just applauding us right now. Is that a word? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and slide this up and reveal this bottom flap down here. This bottom flap needs one of these nice big five by seven spots. Totally prepared and I'm gonna stick this little guy right down here. Awesome. Now we have a ton of waterfall flaps to stick some little guys on. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this up and flip inside my first one. And he's gonna go here. I'm gonna add these on for each flap. So right here up at the top, same technique, eighth of an inch border everywhere. And you pull up an eighth above that score mark down here. And then you solidify it in. Beautiful, I'm gonna go ahead and flip up and not flip out. I'm gonna go to my next one. <laughs> I prepared all my pieces and this is just going by so quick. I love it. I'm having so much fun being here with you. Super excited to get out our design paper soon. Absolute total bingo. Oh my goodness. So now we have a couple pieces to add in here. So because the design paper is going to be towards the bottom here, I decided to go down with this particular picture mat. So I'm going to go there and I'm actually going to repeat the same thing on the front of the flap as well. In the same position down at the bottom. Bottom left corner, eighth of an inch. <laughs> and perfect. And you can flatten your piece out just a little bit if you want to work with it a little easier. And I'm gonna actually burnish from the inside, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that flap again and burnish on the back. Unbelievably gorgeous, oh my gosh. Let's go ahead and fold this up. See how everything's coming together. Yep, we're getting nice and stable, nice and thick. Beautiful, so we actually have some of these picture mats left for our wonderful inserts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those inserts out now. So I'm gonna make a little bit of room and set our awesome book off to the side. And I'm gonna get out our simple E insert, and then I'm gonna stick a nice vertical right here, and then I'm gonna flip it like this and stick one of these. <laughs> That's my little magic trick. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it like this, and I'm gonna glue these onto here. Perfect, they're stuck down and burnished, and I'm gonna move on to the next insert here. So I'm gonna bring in the D. Now the D has two last little square guys on them. Now you'll notice when you go all the way to the left or right, you got a little strip space here for design paper. So I'm going to stick them on like that. You could decide to do one side one way or the other side the other way or mix them up. <laughs> I even want to leave an option to where I can have a picture map in this orientation or a photo with a strip of design paper towards the bottom. So I can decide 
how I want to orient this insert in the pocket once it starts to coordinate with everything around it. So I left myself an option there. So here's a strip on the side and a strip on the bottom. <laughs> I'm going to set that off into the finished pile right there and bring in my next big one, which is our C. Now with this next one, you're going to notice you can go top left or bottom right, or really anywhere you want, wherever you want to imagine that to be. This particular photo mat is going to be located in the on cover pocket on the front inside cover. So for me, I'm going to go top left because I only want one strip of design paper to be revealed, peeking out through the pocket. But then I can actually mess around on the back with a slightly different look. I would like this one to be top right and a landscape picture. I love all the different choices that we can make here. It's awesome. And there you have that one. Here comes the next one, which is just our cute little four by six. I only cut out one little guy. You could have cut out two if you wanted, but I want to put a four by six cut apart on the back of that. So that's why I left that blank. <laughs> and he's totally good to go. And here's the last one. It's the A. It goes on the very back inside cover in that back pocket. So now for this one, you can go all the way up or all the way down. Totally your choice. I think on the back, because it's a landscape, I think I'm gonna go like this. And this completes our very last insert for the book. I'm gonna go ahead and plug these in where they go and we can start brainstorming how we want to decorate our book with our design paper. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So this guy goes way towards the back, right here. And if you feel him bumping into the lip down there, no problem, we're gonna come back with design paper and mat all the way down there. Now that square shaped one, I'm gonna put in here like this. I like the variance. This one has tall energy in the back, this one has wide energy. Now this little guy I intended to fit in here, but I ended up resizing it. So you just have like a, another loose photo mat to stick in whatever pocket you want. <laughs> so now that I have this little guy, he's gonna go inside this pocket, which I think would be kind of cool if I had this thing sticking out like this. Perfect. I can even let that beautiful cut aparts page stick out right here as well and put a tab on this one. So that doesn't stick beyond the book. So it gives it some different layering. <laughs> Sometimes accidents become some of the best things that can happen. So right here, I've got this wonderful large insert. <laughs> right on the back and so you feel that smooth entry phenomenal oh my goodness let's go ahead and get our papers out and see what we want to do i am unbelievably stoked right now great thing about this is you can even use the pieces up here if you wanted <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and set the cover sheet off to the side and now i'm going to start brainstorming the front cover for this particular book i actually want to do a flat mat on the front and then a flat spine mat on the side. <laughs> so with that, I'm actually going to get out my cut aparts pages and set those off to the side, as well as my elements page. And I'm going to keep these off to the side for inspiration. I will cut into them in just a little while. So for me, I'm actually going to need to brainstorm what I want on the front. So I think I have somewhat my idea right here. And then the brick page will be the front. This may change, but so far I'm going to set these particular pieces off to the side so I don't use them too much. And then now I want to get on to the interior. So I put those aside just so I don't cut into them. <laughs> so straight away, we know we have three mats right here on the front and side cover, which is this top flap, bottom, and this base cover pocket right here. So this base right here is just going to be one piece, two and a half by nine and a half. And then we can just kind of lay papers around just to kind of see what it is that we want right there. So I'm kind of laying things around. I just did a little test here and put a brad inside a piece of cardstock, little punch circle. And I'm kind of just laying things around and testing out what I like the look of. I think I may even want these banners right here. I could fussy cut around those. And when I designed it, I made sure I left some room around here so you can get the white space. So I think I just made my complete decision here. <laughs> these cute orange brads in the white circle is adorable. You can even make your circles a color if you wanted, but there is a lot of color going on. So, so far, that's what I like. So that helped me determine the way I laid everything out, this little side piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. So because this is watercolor, this is a lighter wash over here. So I'm gonna turn my paper around and go in at two and a half. So that is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and now cut out the A flap. One piece, 
5 and 1 quarter by 5 and 1 quarter. And we also have a B flap down here, one piece, 5 and 1 quarter by 7 and 1 quarter. So since I already have my pages chosen, I'm going to get to cutting. And I'm not going to stick them down yet because we need to brainstorm where it is that we're going to be putting our cute little Brad guys. <laughs> so I'm just going to dry fit this on there. I tucked that over the half inch flaps right there. And then I'm going to kind of position everything exactly where I think I would want it. Now, because I want to keep this simple, I'm going to use these. So say if we were without magnets, we could use a different closure to keep flaps totally locked in. But you totally have space for two magnets right here. I do recommend two as that would keep your flaps from shifting around so much. If it was just one, they might teeter-totter just a little bit still. <laughs> so there is a pattern direction with this. Almost looks like waves of the ocean. I think I'm going to go light towards the bottom, more at a horizontal slant. So I think I have them pretty much where I want them. I'm going to do a really quick fussy cut around this so I can just see roughly what it'll be. I'm just going to pretend right now that that's what I'm going to have. I'm going to put that guy up and I'm going to put him exactly where I think I want him in accordance with this. And once I feel like I'm centered, and you could totally use your ruler for centeredness. <laughs> Is that a word? Right here, as the Cooper's Hawk says hello in the back. The cute little Cooper's Hawk babies. I just marked out with pencil. Okay, so I just moved that out of the way. Found right about the center where I want to be. And I eyeball this. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to actually come in now. Get that page punctured very carefully underneath. And I'm going to close my prongs again and insert them into the page. And then open them up on the back. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and realign them again to make sure everything is looking exactly the way I would like it to be. And I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and solidify that in the back. Now you could use some nice heavyweight cardstock right here. That would be awesome. You could have even layered up two medium weights and glued them together with our glitter glue on a section of a page and then wait till it dried and then come back and punch out of that spot so you can have some nice thick cardstock there. This is awesome. Those were just my little demo pieces, but they should be fine. It's pretty heavyweight cardstock. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and prepare these pieces with ATG gun tape around the perimeter and a little bit on the inside. Now, if you ever have a last minute decision and you're thinking, oh, I was supposed to lay my magnet underneath this mat in order to come on to this, you could always just stick your magnet on the front mat of one and then this on the other and just make sure your magnets are aligned in the proper magnetization and you'll be good to go. <laughs> just wanted to share that little tip there for you. So now I'm gonna go ahead and line this up just like we have been doing, eighth of an inch border, nice and straight and get that little guy on. Same with this one. Super adorable, love this color. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, here we are. And I'm gonna actually burnish from the other side. And around that brad, you can feel it right there. And same thing for this one. Now it's time for us to add our little guy on here. And when you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and kind of lift this structure up and get him tucked over those half inch flaps. You'd be surprised how you can actually move your mat around if you just kind of elevate it and it can move across even with adhesive on it. And then you could just snuggle it in the spot that you want. Once you're ready, commit. And that's gorgeous. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. I am really excited. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and burnish on the inside just like this. Super cute. Okay, I'm going to add the insert back in. Oh my gosh. We can add a pop of color there later. But now let's add our string on. And you can use really any string for this. It should compensate for it. So I'm going to go underneath. I'm just going to go ahead and lift my piece and get under there. So I do a knot on one side. And then I come back and go make a knot on the opposite side. Highly recommended to use a circle punch that is very uh, thick cardstock and beautiful. It just evens out the whole look right there. And I'll trim it. You could even do another double knot, but I think my string's a little bit too thick for that. 
So I'm just going to end it right there and swivel around a couple times. And now we have our structure. So we can go ahead and lift it, keeping the string attached right there. Super cute. I may even come back and change the string, but that's the technique I use to get that in there. Now, before we start to journey inside on this C flap in here, I do think it is important to know what it is that we're going to be having graduating over to the side. <laughs> So I want to keep that in mind here and kind of brainstorm this first. So right here for page one pocket strip is going to be one piece, one and five eighths by five and one quarter across. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of brainstorm what that color is going to be over here. Now we got a lot of rainbows going on over here, which I absolutely <laughs> am obsessed with, but I think throwing in a neutral would be an excellent idea. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in this position so my lines are vertical. And that fits beautifully. I'm going to go ahead and stick them on. <laughs> totally prepared now, making sure no adhesive is sticking out. And if it does, that's okay. We can just come back and rub it with our fingers. <laughs> I'm going to center that in there. And wow, what a pop. I'm going to go ahead and burnish it on really well. And that is super cute. So I will give the measurements for the next following few in a minute, but I think it is important to kind of know now that we know what this looks like, we can kind of figure out what the strip up here would be for our C-flap. So our C-flap is just a total of two pieces, two and three sixteenths by five and one quarter. So now see, we've got lines horizontal, lines over here vertical. What are we gonna do here? So this is kind of a tighter knit pattern and this is a neutral. And then this is the whole color of the paper theme collection. But I do think this is another good opportunity to bring in a solid color. Now you can go ahead and play around with whatever paper collection it is that you have at home. This is just a technique that I use to kind of bounce papers around and patterns. And so I can have something cut out here. And I like to keep that in mind as well because eventually we're going to cut in to our cut apart pages as well as the elements pages. So I want to kind of brainstorm that for a second. Yeah. I'm feeling it. It's just that feeling that you get that you just know that it's the right one. <laughs> if it makes your heart and your eyes feel good, then that's a complete resounding yes. There's one for the front here that fits nicely. And then I got to do another one on the inside. Now that's actually going to start covering that rainbow. So our scheme is starting to change in here. Now we can make a different big decision here. <laughs> so I've kind of been playing around with patterns and colors here. <laughs> So I think I am settled on this adorable green. We need a total of four waterfall flaps, five and one quarter by seven and one quarter. This very top one is an excellent one to start out with because it's got all the different colors and slightly different shapes going on. So I'm gonna go with this one. Now, because I cut this and there is a blank space here, I can always put like a cute little additional sentiment right there. So this is actually stuff I have to keep in mind when I go and paint a paper collection because I have to think about the white space. And you know what? I'm going to try something really quick. I'm going to go ahead and shave this off here, saving this piece in that orientation. And then I'm going to piece that there and take a sliver of this orange, three eighths or so, same width. And I'm going to set it here and kind of coordinate everything together and kind of see if I can just break that white space up. So sometimes mistakes, like I said, <laughs> become some of the cutest things that can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that and trim where I've got a nice little faux belly band going on. Just for some added interest and maybe come back with like a little element right there. And you can, of course, use this technique anywhere and everywhere on your albums that you want. And you can swap and change out the colors. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and stick these on. So I've got all my pieces prepared and I'm following that same eighth of an inch border roll here. <laughs> Or am I breaking it? <laughs> I'm going to come in with my little assembly here. Adorable. Oh my goodness. I just committed to this design because you never know what might happen. We might invent things as we make quote unquote mistakes. <laughs> I just consider them learning experiences. I'm going to go ahead and burnish all that on. And that is super cute and fun. Oh my gosh. Now I have to decide what the rest of my waterfall pieces are going to be. I think I even want to just kind of jump in and show off that nice string of pearls page because this is kind of a really large area of the book where the design paper is showing. Now you can of course add more photo spots here and just a strip of design paper peeking through when the waterfall flaps are cascading over one another. But for me, I'm just going to add this little guy. 
I just thought of something right now. I'm gonna actually make this one inch by five and a quarter. And then that's gonna be peeking through and instead of another photo spot as that can kind of get pretty bulky, I'm gonna put some white cardstock here. And we know it's five and a quarter across, but I'm gonna get my pencil and mark because I think this would be a beautiful journaling spot. And I can add some journaling lines in there with my journaling pen. So there's gonna be one here and then it's gonna be that one. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing on this flap. A one inch by five and one quarter. Now this is just something I thought of right now. You could follow this or you can completely skip it. I cannot wait to come back and get these all doodled on. <laughs> so I'm gonna start sticking them on. So this is what we have so far. <laughs> Super cute variation right there. If you want a size that's a little bit better than that, it is one piece of five and one quarter by seven and seven eighths. I think I'm gonna do that. I just really think I want that base back one to be the string of pearls paper again. I do have other classes where I show how I fussy cut around and drape these and I'll go ahead and leave that up here. It drapes over the photo mats and it's just so much fun. Oh my goodness. He's gonna fit right back here. Phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Wow. I am beyond excited right now. <laughs> this is just way too fun. I think I heard your dog growl. <laughs> okay, here we go. Beautiful, right in between those score marks you'll notice. Try to center it in there. Sometimes I use a two-handed technique here. Beautiful. Wonderful. Wow. Beautiful spot for either another picture or some journaling, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and glue my last guy down right here. Awesome, I'm gonna burnish in the open position. And we can call that 100% good. I'm gonna wrap this up and then we can move to the next pieces. So that brings us right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page now and you'll see this nice big piece right here. So for these five by five spots, we do have two total pieces for the design paper here, which is going to be three and five eighths by five and one quarter. So that's repeated over here. Now, once we know what these are, we can even cut out our little cut aparts page where we got those cute little two by twos and we can start to stick and put them where we want. So keeping in mind that we have all this layering happening over here, what's the following pattern that we want to appear for this piece? Now I do have sprinkles already happening right there in that corner. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna want here. Now I think I actually want to do another one of those little belly bands. So I'm gonna kinda go right around this area. We already know it's five and a quarter across. I'm gonna cut here. And then I'll find the other size for the next piece. I just want this to be a solid area because I wanna put a faux belly band and then an image overlaying across the top. Three eighths of an inch here. And you can customize all these sizes. If that's still a little bit too low, you can just take piece off by piece. Okay, I'm liking the way that looks because I'm imagining this cute little guy as an embellishment right here. So let's go ahead and fussy cut him out real quick just so we can see. Now he totally could have been a journaling card, but for me, I want to turn him into a little element. Totally customizable. Now that right there looks super duper fun. I'm gonna go ahead and now actually get that next measurement by just laying this down and losing my pencil. <laughs> Here it is. So now I have everything totally dry fit the way I want. This is true scrapbooking because if you start to run out of paper, this is a technique you can use. And you just puzzle piece your little papers together. Love that light spot. It's providing perfect contrast here. And that is just way too cute. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble that on there. And of course, as I'm taping, I have to keep track of which one it is that I have since they are custom. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm in the right orientation here. I believe it was like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it. I am never gonna look at scrappy strips the same way ever again after this. This is adorable. This I think is my first time ever trying this. Here we come, yeah. 100% yeah. 
careful not to smash the pages underneath. And then that is so cute. I'm gonna elevate this, get in that pocket, hold it up, and burnish that on. So with this piece just sitting here, I'm gonna allow myself to brainstorm what kind of little piece I want out of here. So I'm gonna cut these guys out. I just feel like these pieces make it so much fun. I can't even describe the fun that I'm just having right now. <laughs> Okay, so I need to decide what pattern I'm gonna do there. I think I wanna bring back this lined paper. It's super duper fun. I'm gonna stick these down. I like the idea of the blue coming over here and we've just got this nice balance happening. If I were to use this one, it would just be a kind of a repeat here. So I think I can take advantage of this guy in a better way on a different page. So words with images just pair perfectly. Try one and five eighths. Everyone's matting is gonna turn out different because we all make books differently. Beautiful. Just go ahead and play around with it. <laughs> one and five eighths works well for me. These are the ones I'm choosing because I love how they coordinate. Cactus flower right here is the same color as So Fun and it's providing great contrast. Just absolutely love it. Oh my goodness. That moves us on to the back here. So I am going to stick to one and five eighths for this one. Sprinkles are going to be my choice for this one. Perfect. Super duper cute. Now again, we have some layering going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the measurements for the flap here and the pocket of this little envelope piece. So the flap right here is just gonna be a total of two pieces, two and one quarter by six and a quarter. And then the pocket right here, three and one quarter by six and one quarter. Perfect. We also have another one of those strips back here. And I'll leave that measurement right here on the screen as well. We do have these over layering again. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my pages around and see what I like. So of course with mini albums, it's nice to kind of go back and forth and see what you're gonna have on the other side right here to help you make a decision for strips and different elements that appear on the other side. This is what I'm feeling so far because I have some purple going on. I've kind of brainstormed what I want these to be. So I think I'm gonna cut out this paper. <laughs> I'm actually going to make sure I choose a certain side where I can keep this nice big one here. Super cute. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of these on. So now back to here. For the pocket, I'm filling this one in the vertical position. I think I want to bring out a little bit more wild green. <laughs> so in order to angle these up, I'm going to go ahead and set this down here so you can see. I'm going to take my little flap mat right here and I'm going to set this on here exactly the way that I'd like it. And then I'm going to get my pencil out. And from this corner with this flap closed, I'm going to go to the right about an eighth and down straight vertically onto the design paper. And I'm gonna repeat that here. I'm gonna go to the right and up, vertical, little nick mark, and then straight right here in the center. And I'm gonna repeat that for the interior. Now I have to make sure I'm not gonna stick this guy over here or the other one on the other side. <laughs> so I'm gonna line these up in the Fiskars paper trimmer right here and line those little nick marks in. I'm gonna start from the inside and cut out. And same thing on this one, just so we don't mess up that little corner. Beautiful. So because these are organic, we want to make sure we stick this guy on first and then I'll go ahead and mark up and stick on the guy after. I'll just stick them on now because I don't want to confuse the two. Beautiful. Give them a nice burnish right here. We got the AC guy over here working on our AC. We got <laughs> some pretty hot days coming up. <laughs> it's going to be like 111 over here tomorrow. Beautiful. I'm gonna repeat the markup and the sticking for this side, but I'll have to make sure I take that back enough. Now this time I'm going from the corner to the left down and on the bottom from the corner to the left up. Burnishing really good around that magnet here. Excellent. Same thing with this one. I'm gonna remove this and stick my little guy on there. I 
beautiful. Now the inside base right here is one piece, one and a half by six and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and choose mine out. I just brought the rainbow sprinkles back over here and I just love it. So that brings us now over here. But again, we have to make sure kind of what our layering is here because we have another design paper piece that's gonna show up right there. As you can see, I brainstormed my little guy there and I'm gonna use the bricks for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these down. Beautiful. So I repeated a similar style here on this page as I did with the one over here. Now you could choose to just do a straight up flat mat and go straight in for it, or you could just kind of piece some stuff together if you wanted. Now I've got this little guy. I gotta figure out what I want moving on this way. I'm going to brainstorm that by laying some stuff out here as well, because I know that once I get some paper here, it's going to alter the effect of this particular color and pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and layer that up. So I'm pretty much sold on this green one for that last page. Now, while he's gonna go here, I'm gonna give you the next following measurements. So the back base for this back inside cover piece is going to be one piece, seven and one quarter by nine, because we're gonna go all the way down. And then we have this nice big pocket right here. One piece, four and three quarters by seven and a quarter. And then the small pocket, it would be one piece, four and one quarter by seven and one quarter. So this is gonna go right inside here and it's gonna look something like this. And that's gonna go right inside here, how cute. Now before I do that cute little belly band feature, I'm gonna go ahead and get a regular mat right here and set it on top. Now once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna mark the center with my ruler, which is gonna be three and five eighths. So I'm gonna get my pencil out and go three and five eighths. I know that's the center. And then I know I need to measure up so I can find that angle. So I'm gonna go three and one eighth, lining up with the bottom of the design paper, not the cardstock, but the design paper. And I'm gonna make a little crosshair right here at that beginning mark of the ruler, right at the zero. And we're gonna trim from this crosshair all the way up. Go from the inside, cut out, and we are looking beautiful. Now, if yours is looking a little bit too close, you can always trim the bottom of the pocket so you can get that centered in. Beautiful. I don't think I want one. And that's totally okay. Beautiful decision and freedom that we have here. I wanna get these stuck on. That might be good for a different uh, application, but this one, I'm gonna skip it. Wow. I'm gonna go ahead and stick these over the half inch flaps now. And snug it in right where I think it should be. A little bit of an afro side show, excuse me one moment. And bingo. This guy again, I'm gonna elevate him over those half inch flaps, not applying any pressure. I'm gonna wiggle it until I totally feel good and we are totally in business. Wow. Burnishing. Coming back with an eraser, getting that erased right there. Unreal, completely unreal. Didn't even get inside there and burnish through onto the other side. Way too much fun, okay? This is just, I feel just way good about this. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my inserts in here and kind of see how I feel about that. And now all we have to do is actually mat our fun little inserts. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, <laughs> take these out as well as the front inside cover one and this cute little one that didn't fit in the envelope, but it's right back here. Now I'm actually going to stick 
on one of the four by six little cutouts here. So I'm gonna get my paper collection out. I love it. So that's just one piece, four by six. You could do another picture mat back here and put a little four by six photo, or you could just mat with the design paper that you have. Way too cute. You can even stuff really any size picture mat that you want in your book. You see how we can just play around any way we want? Okay, so I'm gonna stuff this back here and I can even have it in this position and put a little tab on there. That would be adorable. So now I've got some more inserts. Let's start out with that front inside cover insert. So right here, we have a total of two strips, five eighths of an inch by five and three quarters. And then we have two right here, three eighths of an inch by seven and one quarter. Now it's great to keep in mind what it is it's peering behind. So I think maybe a solid color would be good or maybe some more sprinkles. So I'm gonna move along this way. Well, actually these will be side by side. So I need to pick a different color. I'm enjoying the green for this one. It's kind of creating a cooling effect. If I did do orange, I have orange showing up here and kind of nearby this strip. So that would make it a little bit more warm, which it does look really nice, but I think I want to go in with this green. So I'm going to cut this out. Perfect. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. I'm gonna give everything a nice burnish and call it good. I can't wait to get a tab on there. This is so much fun. Okay, so now that moves us on to these ones. So we have a nice big one back here and the one in the smaller pocket. For this large one, it's going to be a total of two pieces, five eighths by five and one quarter, and then two pieces, five eighths by five and one quarter again. So let's do it. What do we wanna see when we pull these out? Cute. So now we're on to the front cover. So I know I did decide to put this brick here. So I know I'm gonna totally 100% do that. So the front and back cover pieces both measure two pieces, seven and one quarter by nine and a half. Now it is always important to kind of dry fit our pieces after we snip them out and even better yet, let's measure it before we stick these pieces on. Because since this is a three dimensional object, it slightly changes, but I think I'm actually going to be good to go with that measurement. Now the spine is also there. If you decide to do a spine wrap, I have plenty of tutorials on how to do that. I actually have one free here on YouTube for the choice folio that you could check out. I'll leave that as a link in the description as well. But this time I actually just wanna do a straightaway mat like this. I also think I even want to make the spine brick as well. So I'm gonna go in for the spine measurement here. So for me this time, I'm gonna do one piece, two and five eighths by nine and a half. So I'm gonna go straight away like this. Now I remember that we've got some ribbon to add before we stick this on. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this measurement on the side and that looks beautiful. And on the front, oh my gosh, how much fun is this brick? Okay, so for the back cover, I think I'm just gonna go with a nice signature page. So I'm gonna trim a little bit off right here and then I'm gonna cut the measurement right here. Super fun, oh my gosh. So now before we get these stuck on, I've got all my measurements totally assembled there, all my little pieces. I'm gonna come in with some quarter inch score tape or even three eighths if you wanted. And I'm gonna find the center. And if you wanted to add some ribbon, you can 100% do that. I'm just gonna find the center here roughly. And you can go a little bit to the edge if you want. Now whatever looks center to you, you could just totally load this up. Burnish on the back of your tape. Remove the backing. Get your ribbon and put a good length here. <laughs> I'm gonna go right about there. Now that is really rich in color, but I think it's adorable. I'm gonna go ahead and cut maybe a length of 11 and a half inches there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that same thing on the side, on this back side here. 
my eyes aren't put on straight, so <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna use the one underneath it as a guide. Another length of ribbon that matches the other one. And then I'm gonna close this off with a couple strips here. And for the other side, get them burnished on real good. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm on the proper side here. Inside cover, and it is. Okay, so before I go and stick my mat on, I wanna make sure I'm in the proper orientation there. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna get my quarter inch score tape instead of my ATG gun and just get this all taped up perimeter and some on the inside. I've got my piece all taped up and ready to go. And I'm gonna come right down here, focus bottom right corner and make sure everything's looking nice and tight. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, wow. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm gonna give it a nice good burnish here right over that ribbon. Now I'm gonna prepare my back cover and my spine the same way. The reason I'm using score tape also is because you can really control being at the very edge for these pieces instead of the ATG gun to ensure that because it's the outside, it may encounter more wear and tear. So here we are. You could put even a ring fastener from Tim Holtz right here and then you can add a charm on the side. So you would punch your hole now and add that nice little feature in there. I do have other classes on doing that. <laughs> and I'll leave my classes down in the description if you wanted to know more about that. So I'm gonna keep my book in the folded position here and get this centered on here. I've got about 70 classes ready to go and if you become a subscriber, you gain instant access to every single one of them. Wow, look at this. Way too much fun. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add the back in the same way. Making sure I'm taking the back ends off the score tape here, right over the ribbon. Focusing in right here, allowing it to fall. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Nice burnish right here. That ribbon actually really brings out like a really pretty hue of green. So from this point forward, I'm gonna allow my creativity to take me for a journey and I'm gonna start fussy cutting out all those little elements and sticking them where I think they should go, as well as this wonderful words page and my other little cut aparts. And I'm gonna start plugging them in. If you've come this far and watched this, I wanna thank you so much. You've truly made my day. And honestly, today is a wonderful day to be together. So here I go. <laughs>
think this is where I'm going to stop. I have seriously had an absolute wonderful blast being here with you and creating this book all the way from the beginning. I just had so much fun and I really hope to see your finished projects as well. Thank you everyone so much for joining me. I'm so super happy. I'll see you next time. Bye.